Okay, for the bust, I spray painted it with mechanical standard grid and did something like a zenithal priming with uh, red bone. Now that it's dry, I'm actually going to be using um, black chaos. Yes, uh, black chaos uh, hit it uh, primarily from uh, the bottom up, trying to create something like a gradient. And um, after it dries, I'm gonna most likely hit it with a little bit of um, blue tint just to give it a leather shine. On the bust, so uh, as you've seen, I put um, Black Chaos and then I just painted a touch of touch, lightest touch of uh, some metallic blue on top. And uh, now what's left, uh, it's for this part. And I'm actually going to be using uh, some contrast paint, which is obviously red. I'm gonna use blood for the blood angels, which is a red contrast and it's a little bit transparent and I'm going to be applying it all over uh, because it's a contrast uh, zenithal that's underneath it, it will actually show up quite nicely. Pay attention when it's meeting the jacket because that's something you don't want to make a mess of. While that dries, we're gonna be using some gold for the buttons and some silver for the zippers. Pay attention, yeah, there's nothing to it, just apply them regularly, but pay attention.
energy. What I have done so far is the same as always. Uh, start it off with red bone and applied it pretty much all over. And then applied the first layer of paint, which is a mix of this fall in the same proportions as always, 4, 4, 1, 1. So you apply this all over and you let it dry. And on the on the hair, I'm, I went with mechanical standard gray base. Now I'm gonna move on to the dry brushing part and I'm gonna finalize the hairline also with mechanical standard gray. I'm actually going to do the speckling as well now, so it's a very clear shade with a battle brush. It needs something stiff and a sponge. And uh, I'm gonna wet the, the brush not to have that much intensity. flicker it, yes, to get small droplets, and then pat, pat, pat.
Now I'm going to finalize the hairline and also put some uh, tan glaze. Obviously, take care for them to be uh, to be dry before you do them. So most likely, I'm just going to put the tan glaze all over because I only need to touch the ear and everything. Let it dry and uh, then finalize the hairline. Use it almost as a wash, so you want to dilute it quite a bit. Yeah, it can be quite yellow. Going back to the portrait, now that the hair has dried, I will be painting the um, white of the eyes and the teeth because I'm using whiteish color for both of, uh, for both of them. So, in order to um, do the white of the eye, I'm putting a little bit of a blue with a little bit of a whitish color and with a little bit of a blackish color. I used to use just a standard black but I can't find it so I'm just gonna use um, a black Templar. And for the eyes, for the teeth, sorry, first of all I'm going to apply all over a mix of these two just to have that uh, yellowish tint that we tend to have on our eyes. Get up close with a magnifying glass just to make sure um, you're getting the, the corners and all the details right and apply the white of the eye all over including on the sculpted part. You've noticed we're changing the order a little bit so I haven't moved yet to the, to the pencil and pastels. We're actually going to be doing them later because we're doing the eyes in a slightly different manner. But for the moment we're still at the paint and I just want to put the white of the eyes down and the teeth because I will need to paint them.
looking. So these are the teeth, which you know they are yellow at the moment, but we're actually going to come later with a little bit of this. And the eye is done. Now, the part that is a little changed versus what we normally do, the part that is a lot changed versus what we normally do, is that we're gonna step away from the paint and actually do the rest of the eyes using uh, what we call like pencils. The main reasoning behind this is, first of all, you can make mistakes. They're pencils, which means, uh, and watercolor, which means they can easily be wiped off with, uh, with water in case you're doing anything that's wrong. So all of a sudden, all the stress of holding your breath and being very up close and uh, what's happening if I do a mistake is gone. You can easily correct them. Now, because you're gonna wet, uh, use them wet, obviously, that's why I'm not doing pastel or anything else that's dry. You only use dry colors after you have finalized everything, uh, wet colors, no matter if it's acrylic or, um, or other type of color. And um, another thing that has bothered me all the time is that I couldn't get the blending right unless I did multiple layers with very th uh, thin paint which obviously takes like, works, but takes a lot of time. So I wanted a faster, a faster way to do it. And the pencils, because they will, be, they will blend anytime you touch them with a, something a little bit wet, they're actually ideal for this. The, we are going to start with uh, doing the upper lash line, lining it with black, but this time around it will be pencil. Because again, I didn't like the acrylic, it was too, too harsh. We want it to mimic the impression of lashes, of the lash line, but you don't want it harsh because anytime it's harsh, it will look toy-like. And then using the same black, we're actually going to do the pupil. You need to get the pupil right, the black part, yeah, the black dot that's in the middle of the eye. You need to get it right. And um, previously, if you remember, we just made it all black and then tried to carve it out with, with white. Now, because we have the white down, we won't need to bother with that anymore and because you can correct it so easily. So I'm just going to go straight with black. And the idea is to do two little points, go, step back, try to look if they're symmetrical. If they're not, wipe them with water, do again two little points. Get two little points symmetrical and then try to improve on them a little bit and, uh, and increase them. I'll try to do this on camera as much as possible. Eyes you need to get up close. Um, I'll probably be able to show it better when I'm uh, doing, let's say, a bigger model uh, because I'll be able to see a little bit better. But for the moment, I'm just gonna try see whatever I can. I hope this thing is in focus and I hope you're not getting my, my headlamp. Hmm? You want a brush with a very fine tip. Oops, yeah, vintage of watercolor, I'll just wipe it off. What you want to do up next is uh, using a brown. If you have sculpted eyes, uh, then just follow the outline of the sculpted eyes. If you don't have sculpted eyes, then it's obviously gonna be a little bit more tricky. And you just need to, um, how can I say, pay attention and get to circles as symmetrical as possible. So you should end up with something like this. Do it in pencil, yes? And with water, get inside and clean. Yeah, get inside and clean it up, leaving a little rim all throughout. So you see? Now we're gonna use black and kind of the same brush. So this is size 10, 10 by zero. Put it on your hand not to not to have too much. Try to put a dot in the middle of this circle. To 
to the best of your abilities. As I mentioned, now we are with pencil, so you don't need to get it 100% uh, right from the beginning. And then just step back and uh, look that they are symmetrical. If you are happy with it, or if they're almost symmetrical, do this a little bit bigger. So small strokes, you see how I'm doing it. something like this no I'm not happy with the this one it's a little bit too low this one it's almost perfect I just need to make it round so I'm wiping my brush I'm having a q-tip ready and all you have to do is go in and slowly wipe off what you don't like and then don't drag, just pat yeah. and I'm gonna do the same on the other one and there's no secret to it I mean just go back and forth with black and uh, and water until you get them as I mentioned as symmetrical as possible and as nice as possible. Now, you want to put some acrylic on top of that because you want them to be unaffected by the rest of the colors you're gonna put in. So actually now because we have the outline so we know exactly where to put it, just go in with some acrylic and put it on top of it, two little dots to have them, uh, to have them down. Now he actually has hazel eyes, I was just looking online, meaning we're gonna have to, to use some uh, greens, this brownish green on his, uh, on his eyes. So I already have the brown all throughout. Now I'm gonna go with a desaturated green. Desaturated means not too vi vibrant. You can see the difference between these two. I'm gonna blend the brown that seems, uh, that's around the parameter I'm gonna blend it with some green meaning yeah I'm taking some I want it quite dark and I'm just gonna apply it Try to do like a semicircle on top, so something like this. No, something like this. And then towards the perimeter, you just go slowly. And we're gonna go with the final brush. So this is quite rough at the moment, which is fine because I just applied this one. Now we're gonna move on to smaller brushes. So I think this is probably too small. But anyhow, this is a 30, no, a 20. So it's very fine. Yeah. I'm gonna go and draw some little lines. You see, the color is now quite um, diluted, which means I'm bringing a lot of water in the eye. which will allow me to blend the colors actually. So now I'm just going back into the brown and blending it with the green. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna take a yellow because uh, you can take a yellow or even a golden and blend that from the middle next to the pupil towards the exterior still using a fine brush uh, you can also use some orange we'll probably use some orange also let me see what colors I have in mind I think that's you see something like this um, brown or hazel eyes tend to have a lot of red and yellows in them for the moment I'm just putting a very light color near the pupil and that white that I had down is helping me highlight it Where the yellow and the initial green meet, I'm gonna blend it out with some of this, although it's quite intensive. It's quite I'm using it diluted just to blend the colors in each other. Now you can go a little bit stronger and draw little lines. I'm using pure water just to blend them together. So it will be something like this. If you lost the intensity of the pupil, you can obviously always go back.
Yeah, so these are the eyes. What I've done is also with a small brush using uh, the watercolor pencil wet, I draw some little eyelashes, not something too exaggerated. And um, obviously the rest of the process is the same. I put some red in the red of the eye, in the waterline. Now, also using the brush, I created some uh, strokes where the beard is. Uh, just because I want to in intensify it a little bit as the sculpt uh, doesn't have so many details. But uh, from now on the process is the same. So in order to do the beard, I'm just gonna... Um, I'm just gonna wrap my pencil parallel to it, almost parallel. And then when I come with, um, with the pastel, it will just um, blend it out. Not, not to be so so harsh. And we're gonna do that two times. But now I want to go back uh, in the wet part. Yes, and do the. To the pastel on the face everywhere he has wrinkles i just want uh, this purpley color remember this we just draw little lines and then pat it with the um, pat it with a q-tip or the finger you can do it like this as well When you get to the eyes, pay attention, obviously, that you don't go into the... that you don't uh, touch the eye, because at this moment it will affect it. So from now on, the process is uh, regular. I'm just gonna speed it up. We're doing, uh, I'm moving on to the pastels. I'm doing the pastels all, all over and in the end I'll be doing the teeth. We'll add some more white on them, blend very diluted, just not to have such yellow teeth and, um, and seal it. The rest of the process for the moment is the same.
so uh, we're gonna have to do something like a dry brush but um, using dawn stone most likely but not yet so for the moment i'm intensifying it with a second layer and then dry brushing it again with using the same green and i'm actually going to do the teeth and seal it and after we seal it we're gonna dry brush with uh, dawn stone which is uh, a light gray yeah. on the hair what's left to be done is we're gonna shade it with agras earth shade and then uh, most likely dry brush it as well with uh, now and then with uh, dawn stone so i've applied the um, agras earth shade Yes, yeah, this one. It's a wash. I applied it all over his hair. And uh, now I'm just gonna seal it with this one. I have been using it for a while, but this time around it's needed. And then we're gonna do the white on the beard, the dry brushing with Dawn Stone. Before the dry brushing, this is Dawn Stone. It's, uh, it's a gray, it's nothing to it. The only thing is you need to pay attention when applying it. So, after looking at some reference pictures, pretty much all his beard is, uh, is grey. Except for the moustache and uh, something going like this uh, down. So. You see, that's why we needed to seal it first, because otherwise it would have picked up this pencil. Chui chipacit. And I'm actually going with a little bit more whiteness because I'm seeing it and it's still too dark. I'll be changing the brush. I want something that gives me control.
Okay, now I'm just going to do the uh, the gloss out coat on the eyes and the teeth, obviously, because the teeth are showing. Because you use pencil, don't don't rub. I mean, it's always not a good idea to rub uh, rub the top coat, but especially now because you have pencil down, don't rub. So. You've seen how I'm doing it, I'm just picking it up. It creates something like a blob. Yeah. And this blob, I'm just applying in the center and then patting it around. If it's too much or if you believe it's too much, Okay, I believe it's too much here. You just put a Q-tip next to it and it will absorb some of it. Okay, this is pretty much it. 